Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, coffee and questions. Hopefully you got your coffee handy and let's move into the questions. Um, I had a friend, he bought an out and he bought from the steel supply place a big piece of plate steel um, for the top of his welding table. And, you know, he asked me a question that a lot of people ask, how do I remove the mill scale from it? Well, we, we got into this big conversation over this when he was insistent on wanting to remove it. I mean, in one way I could tell you, don't remove it, just leave it on there. And then he goes, well, you know, the contact, you know, with your grounding clamp versus the electricity and so forth, it kind of would suck. And I go, well, not if you just cleaned up like an area. I mean, you could, you know, I would leave it on because, you know, it to some degree helped prevents rust and a lot of issues and problems and so forth. But he had read enough articles online where there were enough people doing it to where on this large piece of plate steel that I'm talking about, he wanted to remove that mill scale and say, well, you know, what are some ways that you can do it? Well, there are many different ways, I mean, that you can do it. Some are a little dangerous, some aren't so dangerous. And I'm going to jump right into, you know, the questions and answers part of this because it's kind of like an all over the place kind of a discussion. So um, I made notes on this, I mean, so that, you know, we could sit and we could bat things around. Now, I'm going to throw up, I'm going to remove these pictures and I'm going to throw up pictures of products and then we'll discuss ways that you can do that. So whether you're doing a tabletop because you're making a welding table or let's just say that you've got square tubing steel and you've made a project and you want that mill scale off of there because you want to put a nice finish on it, you know, whether it's primer and paint over it, people want to remove that mill scale a lot of times. Okay, so let me change this up and you'll have to think of the project in your head. The one that we're thinking of this morning is, like I said, a big piece of flat steel that he's using for a welding tabletop, but the discussion can apply to any project. All right, one sec and let me change this up. All right, well, here's one way, and this is a safe way. You can put these abrasive discs on, you know, your four and a half inch angle grinder. This picture is taken off of Amazon. You can get them in these 10 packs and this will remove the mill scale very easily. It's a safe way. It won't dig into your metal and it will actually strip and clean off the top of that mill scale on that tabletop you know, that he was talking about doing. You can also use this, of course, on rectangular steel or any other kind of steel. It's a fairly safe way of doing it. So here's one method. Now let's switch it up and let's talk about another. Here's another method right here. These are, I call them flap discs, flap wheels. They go on your four and a half inch angle grinder also. Now I threw up this picture off of Amazon. It shows 40 grit. Now in my little shop, I've got 40, 80, and I've got 120. Now, if that was my tabletop, I would use probably the 120 instead of the 40. And, but I threw the picture up just so that you get an idea. And I get a lot of these discs from, uh, you know, benchmark adhesives. They're, they're fairly good. They're not outstanding, but they're not Harbor Freight quality either. And they're like a buck or so different. So these are what I use. 120 grit would work fine. Let's move on and let's discuss some other ways that you can do it. Okay, I think before we move on, um, there was a question that people get confused a little bit. When steel comes from these uh, supply manufacturers, a lot of times they have cosmoline on it. It's, it's an oil waste product or whatever they use to coat steel so that it doesn't rust. And it also has the mill scale on it. So let's take a look at the picture over on the left so that we're all clear about what we're talking about. And you'll see where the red arrow is pointing at what mill scale is. Then take a look to the right. It says grinded but not cleaned. Well, that's true. So we don't have it quite as clean as we want. Now take a look at the bottom. It says clean and ready for welding. So that's like a, when we talk about weld prepping and stuff, we're getting the metal real clean before we actually weld it. So it, this gives you a visual picture, I guess, so that you know what we're talking about before we move forward. Take a look at the picture on the right. I have not used this product. I had somebody post and say, hey, I use Evapo Rust. I buy it off Amazon and this stuff works real good and it's biodegradable and it doesn't contain any acids. And I'm like, well, okay. And a couple other people commented they've used it too. They use it for de-rusting tools and de-rusting a lot of things. Now, whether or not that's going to work for mill scale, I don't know. They say if you soak it long enough, now you're talking about smaller projects, 
it loosens it enough to where you can scrape it off really easily. So again, I haven't tried the product, but we'll talk about some other redneck ways of doing this here in a sec. So I just wanted to be clear about this before we continue the discussion. So hydrochloric acid, yeah, you can do that. And I'm going to tell you, you better have it outside in a well-ventilated area. You better have gloves. You better have eye protection. And you don't want to breathe hydrochloric acid, okay? The fumes are very toxic. It will do the work. It is a little dangerous, like I said. Um, you can do it. I mean, what would I do? I would, uh, I've done it before, okay? And I get the top steel super wet. Then I go ahead and I start applying a little bit of that hydrochloric acid. And then you just keep moving it around with a brush or something like that. And you'll find that in about 10 minutes or maybe at tops, this thing is going to start tearing off that mill scale like there's no tomorrow. It works really, really good. Now, when you're done, what do you do? Rinse it with water and use a scrub brush. You keep rinsing it with water and scrub it. When you're done, get like a gallon container or so. Use one cup of baking soda. Put some water in that gallon container, or it's one gallon to one cup, let's say. Mix it up, and then put that on top of that steel table. And what I do is I kind of scour it in. I scrub it in real good, and I let it sit on there for a little while, 20, 30 minutes, whatever. And then I wash it, and I wash it, and I clean it. Now, what does that do? It neutralizes that acid that was on there and makes sure it's 100% neutralized. Then I go ahead and I dry it off and I blow it down real good with my blow gun. As an added precaution, if it was going to be a welding table, I'd put some kind of uh, like light oil on the steel so it doesn't rust out right away because it will. Um, you can use Pam cooking spray. A little expensive if you go that route, but you know what? I've used Pam cooking spray before. It works wonderfully for you know protecting that tabletop. Or like I said, you could use some kind of a thin oil on it. Um, well, I'll give you a side note on something. If you're going to go the dangerous route with a hydrochloric acid, look at it another way. Just grab some pool acid, do the same thing. Does it work? Yeah. Do you have any left over? I can tell you right now that this thing will clean the tile in your shower and your stalls, as well as your tools and anything else beyond belief. But again, I mean, this is like a more toxic way of doing things. And as long as you use all the precautions... Yes. Redneck method? Yes. Does it work fantastic? Yes. And it will work on anything else that, you, like I said, you have some leftover stuff. Throw some of your rusted tools in the bucket and let it soak, you know, and then do the same thing and neutralize it. For your shower, you don't need to go through the neutralizing, but I would wash the living hell out of it. But this thing will take scale, stain, everything off your shower. Okay, so, you know, just a little side note, a little tip maybe. Um, on smaller stuff, you know, the other thing that you can do that's a lot safer, I mean, really, uh, I don't want anybody to get hurt with this stuff, but I mean, you can go to the store in a very, or the dollar store in a very safe way of creating like a little deruster is get yourself some white vinegar. Soak, throw your tools in there that are rusty and funky, soak it overnight, then use baking soda and water to neutralize it, dry it. Give it a little coat of oil. Your tools are all back to the way they were, but that's for smaller stuff. Sorry about that. Uh, the video is over, but I did uh, get a question. I forgot to answer it. Is there a good supplier of good flap wheels and sanding discs and stuff like that? Um, yeah, I'm sure that they're all over the place, and I buy them off of Amazon, and I buy them out at the big box when I'm in a quick need. When I have the time, the place above me is where I get them from. A lot of their products are German-made. They're high-quality they cost me a dollar or two more. Um, I use them, but I use them correctly. I mean, if you're going to use sanding flap discs and stuff like that, I have a friend of mine that goes, oh, these are junk. These are junk. These are junk. And I watch him use them. He puts them on and he bears down with like a great deal of force when he's using these flap deals, when he's trying to clean up welds and stuff. And he's like, well, it only lasts a few minutes and then I got to trash them because they're just crap. Well, they're not. I mean, a lot of times, you know, when I'm working around him and other people, I see you're using the things wrong. I mean, put the stuff on there. Let the flap deal do its job. Don't press down on it like that. Just press down on it lightly. Let it do its job is what I'm trying to say. And you will get more longevity out of it than anything. However, this is a good supplier. I make nothing off of it. I have no affiliation with them. But if you want, take a look. I've given you the website, and I've given you like a little picture of the header from their site. I'm the Home Handyman. This was meant to be a quick video. I hope you click subscribe, and 
let me know what you think. I mean, you want something else to talk about? You know, give me the topic. I'll research it. I'll go to the forum. I put everything together and then I make these videos and uh, try to get right to the point. All right. Click subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much, folks. Bye-bye.